Welcome to Have Movies, Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. But the fun doesn't stop there, no sorry. Every few episodes, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will ask you, the listener, to vote on which movie they will play as an RPG, recorded in video and in glorious black and white, and brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! So speaking of leading with the cock, Kurt Russell, guys, come on. Yeah. Oh, we're doing this. Okay. Yes, we are doing it. That was an interesting lead-in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Hi, everyone. I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. Shut up, Nathaniel. And this is, my, this is in my top four favorite movies of all time. Top four? Yeah. Okay, so what are the other three? Uh, Master and Commander, Far Side of the World, uh, the Dune, that's, uh, what's his, the Lynch? Yeah, David Lynch's okay. Dune. <sighs> what would be my last one? And these are in no order, just like, just the other three in general. I'm trying to think of my last one. I'll get back to you, but the graduate, not, right? Not no, it's not, it's, it's, it's not the graduate. <laughs> uh, no, it's just, there's so many that really, that really deserve Pollyanna. I, you know me well. Um, <laughs> I want to say Robotech, but it's too long. It's not a movie. That's a the series. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. That is a great movie. That is a terrible I, movie. I Fuck you. When was the... Oh, God. That movie is... <laughs> oh, it's horrible, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's in my top three. Okay, cool. It's fine. All right. No, I, it's, I, I can't it's, get four. I think it's definitely and probably like my top 10. no no wait i i do know what my fourth one is and it's an oldie it's last of the mohicans that that's that's my fourth favorite. that's a, that is a good really movie. good one yeah. you just also named some of my fiance's favorite movies yeah the soundtrack yeah. for that is really good i really yeah. love the soundtrack for last of the mohicans i have some unfortunate connotations but that is a great soundtrack okay yeah so this is nothing like that dramatic piece though or any of those no. drama pieces what no. this is is just Badassery. Fast. It's it's no because Jack Burton's a fool. It's yes, it's he is fast, well written, comedic action. And but it is badassery. Oh, oh yeah, it's it just yeah, our it does hero happen. doesn't do any of it. He's not the hero. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And I will agree. I like. I have fights with friends about this. So like Jack Burton is the hero. I'm like, no, no. Jack oh, Burton sweetie, is the no, no. Bard Jack hero. Is, yeah, <laughs> you're right. He is the full out bard of the group, and he thinks he knows what he's doing. Oh, no. And no. he doesn't. First he, time he, you ever plug somebody? Of course not. <laughs> and as he's standing there going, I just took a man's life. He's 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 distraction for everybody that actually needs to do something. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's the, he's, he's a bard. catalyst, but but not he's not the hero. Um, <laughs> but I fucking love this movie. It It is. I, there's quotes from it I still use to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, eternally. Yeah. yeah. Like it is when, one of the most infinitely quotable pieces of, of literature. Yeah. yeah. Literature, yeah. literature. goddammit. When, when, whenever I, I bust up a bar fight in my bar, the the thing I say to myself to rile myself up mm-hmm. is directly from this movie. It's, son of a bitch must pay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard that a lot growing up, actually, around this time. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, and as I was talking to Nathaniel before the thing, is that this... Uh, if if you took away the uh, the police and emergency responders at the very end of the movie as they're driving away, mm-hmm. and those cars are pulling up, mm-hmm. you could and uh, added cell phones. Yeah, you, this movie could have been filmed yesterday. Oh yeah, a little bit of hairstyle, but nothing too bad. Um, I mean, it's it 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 holds up mm-hmm. so well for a movie this old. The the airport scene doesn't hold up. Oh, with all the guns, with all the guns and the people and just, just being able to right wait there. at yeah. the gate. Yeah, yeah that yeah, doesn't, yeah. Hold, that up, doesn't but... really hold up. No, so I'm not convinced that was filmed in an airport. Like actually, probably the, the filming of it. Uh, that was just some strange terminal because the only thing that shows it's an airport is her face looking out for one one thousand of an airplane window. Mm-hmm. Um, what th- I know that there's a number of. Things that have been filmed. No, Leverage. Leverage. The, sh- the television show Leverage mm-hmm. was filmed in Portland, Oregon, it, for at least a significant chunk of it was. And in that show are a number of airport scenes. Right. All of which are filmed at our convention center. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm I'm with you. That's yeah, probably I, I was think, filmed, not I filmed at an like airport. The, 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 the whole airplane was about six inches around her face. Yeah. And that was. The yeah, it was probably just a photo they set yeah. up. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Uh, so if, uh, if those of you who are listening, uh, if you don't know, uh, we, uh, this is a big trouble in little China, uh, which is the story of our hero. Well, supposed hero, the bard. No, I no, guess. no. He, he's, he's the hero. He's the just hero, not very good quote, at it. Uh, Jack Burton, who helps his friend Wang Chi, uh, rescue Wang's, uh, his, his fiance, his green eyed fiance from bandits. The girl San with Fran- green eyes. Yes. In San Francisco's Chinatown. Uh, they're forced to go into the mysterious underworld beneath Chinatown where they face an ancient sorcerer. Low pan! <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. Who requires a woman with... Do it again? The girl with green eyes. To marry him in order to release him from his centuries-old curse. In the years since, I have become a big fan of the Kung Fu Panda series. And really? David really? Lopan. It, it's, it, it's that amazing. I really series wouldn't of picture movies. you for even liking they are Kung Fu Panda. Hilarious. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. Really well done. And, but David Lopan is Poe's father. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Ping. <laughs> Lopan is he, the, the guy that plays Lopan. I've, I've liked him in everything I've seen him mm-hmm. in. So I loved him as old Lopan, too. He was he was fantastic when he was in the wheelchair and he's like huh? a, a million. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no. He was a. Yeah. You are not here to get it, Mister Barton. <laughs> he was a sassy motherfucker. Oh, dude, yes. he's exactly what I want to be when I'm ancient and useless. I mean, that's that's who so I. So you want to have be. the glowing skull, also, right? Is yeah, that... whatever. I, that's that's no longer. I, I don't care what I look. I like want an at escalator that point. in my basement. That's what I want. I just I want yeah. uh, whatever god I pray to to be like a neon outline yeah. as I come out of his belly, going down into. My yeah, whenever room. possible. <laughs> <laughs> so much neon. <laughs> oh my god, there's John Carpenter. I love you. God damn, you had so much neon in that movie. It was great. No, that that was great because I grew up in uh um uh, being babysat because both my parents worked uh by friends of the family who owned a uh, Cantonese restaurant. Mm-hmm. Huge restaurant, never in Washington, called the Great Wall. Mm-hmm. Made their own noodles, they were in the paper. They're, they're Badass Sounds Chinese good. Are they restaurant. Still, are they still up? No, no. Oh no. damn! Are they open right now because I want some food. Yeah. No, <laughs> also have to travel across state lines. But um, oh. yeah, so I live up there. Um, no, no, no. It's Everett by oh. Seattle. Oh, okay. Wait. Um, wait. but uh, neon. Mm-hmm. Th- that that was not a choice of John Carpenter. Okay, that, that is something that if if you wander into an Asian bar, mm-hmm. you will find neon. Like it, like even today, to or was day. it just like yeah. in the eighties? It was a thing because I know it was the a 80s huge were thing, a thing in the eighties. But it's it's still it's still there to this day. Wow. What I understand has replaced it in a lot of Asian owned establishments, at least in the southeast. From my experience, at least in my twenties, and whenever I go back to a visit Atlanta, mm-hmm. is a lot of those places have replaced it with blue or white track lighting. I've noticed a that in yeah. a few in a, in a few of the establishments here in yeah. Portland, you have to wait till they party. Like Chinese New Year? Neon! You're expecting red and gold? Neon! (laughs) Hey, you know, put on a show. Make it right. Speaking of John Carpenter. Yes. He did the music. Yes, he did. It's yes, really he did. Bad. So there's there's a <laughs> big bit for the, trouble. So there's a there's a chat. I love the Casio effects where he's like, you know, action. Da, 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 boop, 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 mm-hmm. boop, that song boop, at the boop, end. Boop, is, boop, boop, boop. That song at the end is the worst branded theme oh song my I've ever heard in my life. So the 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 studio wanted more of like the eighties metal hair. For this whole movie, I'm really for this glad feel they feel and it's, look it of the stood movie. Up. There's some things in this movie that I'm like so happy that they changed, but that was one of them. They wanted music that was more 80s, big hair, warrant, cherry pie, you know, type, because that was what was big then. Yeah. And Carpenter, there was a song that was done, and apparently, uh, the story goes, he just fucking hated it. So it's like, nope, nope, I'm going to pull out my old Casio and I'm going to do it myself, <laughs> just like every other movie I've done. You know what? It is, I, I only, for the time it was released, it was fine. Mm-hmm. I only see it now as like, oh my God, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? My partner upstairs listening to us just sends me this text message in all caps saying, you know what Jack Burton says at a time like this? <laughs> Well, well, well done. Well done. Awesome. The check is in the, the mail. mail. <laughs> <laughs> just grab that demon by the horns and just hold on. It's all in the reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a movie that's been out that came out in 1986, but obviously if you have not ever watched it, we are going to be talking about it and there are going to be spoilers. I was yelled at last time for directly insulting people who didn't watch a movie, but I just want you to know 
that I do think Who less yelled of you at you if you uh, both of you did. I, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I was way back in Suicide Squad. Oh, but, well, that, uh, okay. Don't worry about that. But uh, you that should you we, should have seen this. Have we have we done that movie? I don't think we've done that movie. <laughs> I certainly don't remember it. This, must, must have lost. This it. is this is a gr- I mean, this is a great movie by itself, but this is also a great party movie. And I don't mean like getting drinks and hanging out with friends. I mean it is a great like it's oh, a yeah, great yeah, yeah. party movie. Yeah, as in um, in a D and D way. Yeah. Yes. Or just a game. Oh, what did what, she, what say? she say? She now? just keeps sending me these quotes. <laughs> Honey, I never drive any faster than I can see. see. Besides that, <laughs> it's all in the reflexes. <laughs> Do you? Does the mic go up to a speaker? Does she have no, like, a just hidden loud. camera? <laughs> we're, we're loud. <laughs> a hidden camera, you say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got. I got. I got. Just, oh shit! I got another shirt on. Oh well. Uh, so <laughs> she did it again. She did what it again, got? apparently. <laughs> I can hear y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right, anyway, so rounding out the <laughs> cast, family guy. We're gonna right. we're gonna start with the bard of the of the crew, uh, Mr. Kurt Russell, Jack playing Burton. Jack Burton, driving the Pork Chop Express, that big old semi truck that has the pig on the back that says "haul an ass." And actually, if you had like read the book that the novelization that goes with this he is actually hauling uh pigs in that truck damn it and it's funny because when the camera pans and he's eating a sandwich it's a ham sandwich i was just hoping it was well i I do know that uh, you know i've seen this movie so many times i've never paid attention to the part where they were unloading the truck but there's like a lot of animals coming. yeah uh, i i it was chicken and fish was the main thing and i actually based my thing on the fact that he was hauling fish oh so i wish you hadn't said that (laughs) because i don't think they feed pigs to things at the place where well, this is not the fish stick express. <laughs> so Jack Burton, who likens himself to a hero in this whole movie, as we've already said, is not. He's the bard, pretty much, of the entire group. He's the comic relief. Yeah, he's, he's the comic he's relief. The foil he's the distraction. For, yeah. Chaotic good. Oh, agreed. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. what I have down. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He ca- yeah. full on chaotic good. Chaotic good. Uh, I love his uh, his trying to deal with the uh, with the insurance company mm-hmm. while mm-hmm. they're all trying to figure out what's going next i mean that that's that's straight bard shit there oh yeah it's like okay the fighter and the paladin and the the healer we're trying to figure out what's going on how are we going to take this off and the bard's like i'm just gonna go do my corner i got noodles i'm gonna eat thank you egg shen um there was a little side tangent here so uh my friends i know you know most of them nathaniel um we watched this a couple like i was like a year ago over it over at their house and there's that one scene that my buddy Mike, he after the scene happened, he just said, "Yeah, that's Dusty," and everyone laughed. And I'm like, "Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not wrong." The scene where uh, Jack and Wang are like, they they find the the hollow wall and they're trying to get down. And oh say, yeah, yeah, you know, hollow, hollow, hollow fuck, fuck it, it, and he cuts it. <laughs> yeah, Mike leans over, and goes, "Yeah, that's Dusty." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong." Th- this movie is is filled <laughs> with that back and forth, where mm-hmm. it's just it's question, question, yeah. action. Question, question, action. Mm-hmm. Almost, you know? So 90% of, of what Jack Burton says in the movie is a question. Almost yeah. mm-hmm. everything that, mo- mostly, there, there's a good, there are a number of exceptions, but the large majority of his dialogue is him asking a question in response. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like when, uh, when, when Wang is like, they got this little clubhouse thing where they all hang out. I, I, can, I can't ask you to. And he's like, where is it? He goes, Thank you, Jack. You know, I mean, it's just all of it is just yeah. this kind of back and forth, and you get this sense of of friends, yeah, together, which is a huge underlying thing in this movie. The phone company thing that they did mm-hmm. gets me to this day. Yeah, where they just, oh, it's great. They, they walk in, they're just wearing. Oh shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the phone. One of them's <laughs> holding a phone. <laughs> just the phone company. Just is it like... back here? Okay, yeah. We'll just we'll just let them know that we're back in the back. Which is and... why you don't let the bard plan the assault. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. That was a really well done persuasion check. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, that's it, what they're for. Really... But uh, they failed it. No. They still... Oh no. Well, they, they got. got they walked in. They walked in, but they still failed. They walked in, and I always looked at it as like. Yeah, persuasion check. You guys did it. You got by, but it's because they, well, they, 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 they fooled the guards. They didn't fool Lopan. It was a okay. really good persuasion check, a really shitty perception check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, guy, I can go with that. So uh, then we have Kim Cattrall. Uh, I know. Gracie Law. Gracie Law. <laughs> yeah. Who actually had to spend 15. She had to get hard contacts put in because her eyes are not green. And it was apparently very painful. Oh yeah, the the contacts of that uh, that age sucked. Yeah, That's why very I wear glasses hard. to this day and because it took. Uh, 
apparently it, it took so long and her eyes would water for like an additional 15, 20 minutes. So they had to wait for her to, to get in and get ready. Because oh, that eyes sucks because watering. there was a lot of, that's the thing. It was the girl with green eyes. So there's a lot of close ups. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I basically, I'd been like, just keep them in as long as you can keep them in as a director. Uh, and if you have to power through in the pain, we'll just give you more money. So Gracie law, uh, chaotic good. Really? I was just going to go lawful good. She, she was protector of the say, week at the I airport doing neutral. Neutral. I would say she's, maybe she's, neutral. She's a journalist, uh, yeah. so neutral. Yeah. Why not lawful? Well, yeah. She was I playing did. a little fast and loose with, with the rules here. I, I think the whole, I think she was definitely more in like Jack's camp of mm-hmm. the ability of resistance to authority than she was in like, like, uh, another person that I would say would be lawful good would be like way. Yeah. Definitely him, mm-hmm. but I, I, I don't know. I would go with neutral. Neutral okay. good. Okay. Yeah. So, I can live with it. I okay. just thought she was lawful good. And mm-hmm. she wasn't a reporter, was she? She was a journalist. No, that was the other girl. No, I thought she... Yeah, the one who uh, was into Eddie, curly hair. That was the journalist. Yeah, yeah. She was just like a social worker type person trying to bring down this person. For some, for some Show reason, up to I kept the airport, thinking, for some save I, the girl. For some reason, I kept thinking she was a journalist. No, I distinctly the other remember... Is... I honestly don't remember anything about her employment or what her occupation was she shows up at airports yeah. and rescues uh, yeah sex but i think i thought, there, I thought that's her a, job apparently i thought there was a comment that she was a journalist also no that was her friend that oh, was I, with I, her okay well yeah. i guess i just put i've been trying together. to jack i've been trying to get anyone from the press to listen to us and shows her this oh, nothing yeah, reporter okay. from this weird See, Local normally newspaper. I do rewatch the movie yeah. just before we do this, but I've seen it like two dozen times, so that I I didn't rewatch oh, it. I, that's so. what, always before the show. <laughs> always. So I've merged two characters apparently. Yeah. All right, and then we have Dennis Dunn as Wang Chi, oh, uh, fucking badass. Who who everybody thinks is the sidekick, but he's he's the leading character. Yeah, yeah he's opinion. he's he's a fighter. He's he yeah. is the head of the party. He's deciding what's going on. He is lawful good. I agree. The with whole that, story yeah. arc is about him. He is Jack, him and his who, girlfriend. Who tells the story? Because uh, he's to, the bard. To, to yeah, the he's audience. telling it over a, of CB as he's driving down yeah. the road. Yeah, that's yeah. When some wild ass eight foot tall maniac <laughs> grabs your neck, taps the back of your favorite head up against the bathroom wall, and he <laughs> looks you <laughs> crooked in the yeah, eye, and, so and he asks you if you paid, paid your, your dues. dues. You just stare that big sucker right back in the eye. You remember what old Jack Burton always says at a time like this? Have you paid your dues, Jack? Yes, yes sir, sir. The check, the check is, is in, in the, the mail. mail. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, uh, Lawful Good. Oh, Lawful Good. Yeah, yeah okay. I would definitely say Lawful yeah. Good. He, oh, was, yeah. he was the hero. He yeah. was the champion of mm-hmm. right doing everything. Like To the point that he would frequently like correct everyone else who was yeah. trying to like, all right, we can go. To- no, no. He always put go. Jack back in line, too. I like that. Yeah. yeah, he did. And I, and I liked also that, that he... He carried. I mean, he carried so much of the movie. Itself. Oh yeah. I mean, Jack Burton, uh, Kurt Russell is great in the movie, and he. I mean, he carries weight with him. But Wang as a character, just it was great to see that whole progression. And like arc when they're him. gambling at the very beginning. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was, was like, great. No. And he slams the table. Yeah. And no. apparently, he was. Uh, uh, Dennis Dunn was up for another role on, on as a TV miniseries at the same exact time, and his uh, his agent said listen this is a little too weird do the safe bet and go with the 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 mini series yeah. and he said no i i've always wanted i'm a big fan of buckaroo bonsai i've always wanted to work with john carpenter oh, so God, i'm gonna Buckaroo's do bonsai. i'm yeah. gonna do this instead and it paid out you know for him at that time it was it was great still is like i said this thing holds up yeah it does and you're right aside from a few things that just a couple just yeah, a couple yeah. just and mostly technology like background i mean now you'd have if they redid this movie which they're going to do he would have um, been on his phone yeah it, there would have been more cell phone use there'd be more security cameras and more internet type stuff um not even that though i mean it, none of that was necessary no it, but there would be the the phone call where he calls his insurance mm-hmm. that would have happened uh where he's carrying in an old rotary phone as they're from the change. phone company yeah. <laughs> that, that would change yeah so so what was yeah. so so if it were to be filmed today how would you change that that he'd just walk in with a tablet just a tablet okay. yeah and be like uh you know one of those uh just an ipad w- no work work tablets okay. you know oh in the shop big box. black okay. hard case yeah. yeah 
I would just walk in it. with a fucking cell phone like, from phone coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that another way to do it. Yeah. yeah, that is another way to do it, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, even with the, that, that whole explanation in the beginning from Wang about, you know, mind and body being oh, yeah, yeah. synced up and, and then going into the she's the one. That was a great bit. And then with the bottle missing and then Jack's. Reflexes. Oh, no, I just I, I love that scene where he's like, uh, is this going to get ugly now, huh? I hope not, because when I thought we were here, racial differences notwithstanding, it's just a couple of old friends, you know, both Californians. Yeah, I uh, I think I think Kurt Russell wanted his like I think Jack wants to be like Snake Plissken. I don't know what that means. You've never seen Escape from New York or Escape what? from LA? We need to put that on the list. I've got them both on the media. Yeah. Center. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah we, watch we'll, them. I'll, we'll put we'll put Escape from New York on the list. You got to start with New York and then watch L.A. Okay. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So is it comparable? Is, can... is it funny? There have there are some <laughs> there are some humor points. Okay. But it, this is a very serious character. Oh. It, well, it's a serious character who's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, okay. It is hilarious because of how like campy bed it. Okay. Yeah. You're familiar yeah. with Metal Gear? Yeah. Metal Gear is based yeah, on Snake. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. And what and really one of the the really interesting things about Big Trouble in Little China uh n- now in 27 well I think it came out in 2016 is there's a comic book series um and I think they're like 8 or 10 episodes into it and it's hilarious and they do a crossover of Jack Burton meeting Snake Plissken. Oh jeez. And it's fucking hilarious. So uh, if you ever get a chance, you should pick that one up. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I like when he's bitching about his truck. He's like, I lost a whole truck. He's like, how do you think I feel, Jack? I lost a whole girl. <laughs> 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 like I said, he's just like Jack is his foil. The the byplay between the two is fantastic. Oh, yeah. They're great friends. They've been friends for a very long time. Yeah. I do like that it's established very early that they know each other, that they're buds, and they're about to go on an adventure. Yeah. I, I yeah. also like that this isn't The Last Samurai. This isn't the last of the Mohicans. The white people in this show know nothing. Mm-hmm. nothing they know at all. Nothing, nothing about at all. what's happening. And it is completely it's, carried by yeah. the the Asian community that, that goes through this whole movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, because, you know, I'm a fan of my race. I think I think we're okay. But I also know we blunder around like idiots a lot. Oh, yeah. And this show yeah, we do really well. Yeah. Like... Uh, when uh, the reporter is is when they're they're all back after the the first big fight and they're he's filing his claim and they're all in the apartment, and uh, the reporter girl is like, "This is all so shocking. I must be so naive." And like three people turn to her and say, "In in sync, you are." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, that is, that would be uh, mm-hmm. that's Kate Burton who plays the uh, uh, Margot, the journalist. Yeah. Yes. So then we have uh, David Lopan, played by the great James Hong. Oh, he was wonderful. so I good. I know. Uh, he was so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he did a great job with the character, and I just I I loved how he was always like, "You're a fly, Jack. Go away." Yeah, you know, he's always like, "You're you're, you're bothering as me. you would to a bard." Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. Do you have a favorite quote? Yeah, we we have we have stepped. Well, I've, been, here. I've been reading your your text here. Now that you're down here, Nathaniel's partner has stepped down here <laughs> to say hello and get a, a bottle of well, Quinette wine. Ah, oh. so she's the one that's been feeding uh, Nathaniel <laughs> quotes from from the other area of the studio. I think I think the um, I think the one I I sent you. With the have you paid your have you paid your dues, Jack is probably my favorite. <laughs> um, I'll have to I'll send you some more. My uh, personal favorite is all right. You people sit tight, hold the fort, and keep the home fires burning. And if we're not back by dawn, call, call the, the president. president. Yes. <laughs> you sent me this other one. May the wings of liberty never lose a feather. <laughs> Merica, Merica. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or no, this this is this is one of my favorites actually. All right, all right, this is one right, of my, I got one too. You you just listen to the old pork chop express here now and take his advice on a dark and stormy night when the lightning's crashing and the thunder's rolling and the rain's coming down in sheets thick as lead. Just remember what old Jack Burton does when the earth quakes and the poison arrows fall from the sky and the pillars of heaven shake. Yeah, Jack Burton just looks that big old storm right and square in the eyes and says, "Give me your best shot, pal. I can take it." I like when they're tied in the fucking chairs in their first meeting uh, 
old low pen. Oh yeah. And uh, Jack's like, "What? I'm supposed to buy this shit? Two thousand years, and you can't find one girl to fit the bill? <laughs> Come on, Dave, you must be doing something wrong." <laughs> oh, there's some great bravado from from oh, yeah. Burton. Oh, my next favorite line comes from that same scene where yeah, he yeah. says, "Shut up, Mr. Burton. Yeah. You are not put upon this earth to, <laughs> to get, get it." it. <laughs> Dude, old I've used pen. that so much in my life. <laughs> When I hear people say, I don't get it, I just, that just, it's right there. You're not here to get it. You're not here to get it. <laughs> Dude, Old Pan is my favorite. And then the spell will be lifted. <laughs> he just goes, Aww. Aww. <laughs> Yes. So, so you know the scene where he comes down, where Lopan comes down the escalator? Yeah. So apparently, uh, James Hong was in like eight or nine inch, like flat. Oh, yeah, because Lopan's down. supposed to be like eight feet tall. Yeah. And, so he was told, just stand there, and then we're going to have your stunt double come in and, and cut, and they'll be able to walk down because you're not, fam- you know, you don't know really how to walk. But Carpenter was, like, behind the ball on time. So, like, just fucking do it, do it, do it, do it. So there's a scene where he gets down, he almost completely falls over because Hong is only, like, you know, five foot one, five foot <laughs> Oh, yeah, two. he's five foot nothing. <laughs> So yeah, he almost he almost tanked it, and he said in an interview that was like the scariest thing out of the entire movie was him on these, like almost stilts for him, dude. When he was going, uh, when uh, uh, Kurt Kurt Russell is going back down the 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 slanted hallway, <laughs> oh like, yeah, in the wheelchair that looked terrifying. Yeah, there was there was a lot of backward play in that yeah. was filmed for this movie. Is that what the kids are calling it? That's these exactly days? what the kids are calling it these days. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Button. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray for butt stuff. So, yeah. So, apparently for that whole scene, there was um, uh, it, there was a, like a, a cable on that you just, it was it just edited paid out. out. Yeah. yeah. It was edited out. Over I, I want to talk about the, the cinematography out. really fast. Okay. The, the, all the action scenes in this were fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it was mostly action scene. Yeah. So, I mean, because they did camera speed up, camera slow down. And mm-hmm. it was... It, it was it was incredibly well done because it wasn't random. It was always in conjunction with a story element. It's all in the reflexes, and they speed the camera up, and his hand snaps up and grabs the bottle. Mm-hmm. Or he's going he's going down the fucking ramp, screaming his full head off, and it speeds up, and then it just stops when he's at yeah. the edge of the precipice. And he's like, oh, and oh. then so you have super fast followed by super slow. Mm-hmm. And I mean, those are really great cinema uh, cinematic choices. Yes. I love the flow of the very first fight in the movie. They, well, no, Bong. the very first one was in the airport, I guess. But what I consider the very first fight of the with movie. The Lord's the street death. Fight. With the Lord's yeah. of the Lord's Yeah. So, comes in, stops, funeral procession. People show up, kill all of them. Yeah. People show up, kill all of them. People show up, start fighting, and then three guys show up and kill everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole time, <laughs> the two heroes are simply sitting there like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> I love I love the weapons too. The weapons are ridiculous. You got homeboy with knives, which are almost yeah. real mm-hmm. weapons. And then you have I have cat scratchies. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> or the dude with the bandoliers of oh, bullets that yeah. did not go to any of the guns that yeah. he was holding. No. <laughs> yeah. He was uh he was also in Die Hard. Yes, yeah, he, yeah, was, he, he was. was one of the terrorists in in Die Hard. Um yeah, and then all of a sudden you see Lopan just kind of walking by the truck. I like how they made him glide. I want to know how they yeah. did that. Um, I mean, they could have just had a dolly and Probably. Like, pulled it with a rope, but they did that very well that they made him not mortal. Mm-hmm. You know, he does not move like we do. He is of a of a different height than we are as humans. Mm-hmm. He is an elder demon from an elder place, and he is not of us. Correct. I don't understand that one guy whose only real power was that he could explode. Oh, they got big. <laughs> oh, he was... He was um... Uh, he was thunder. A storm. Yeah, yeah, thunder. yeah. He was thunder. Yeah. Who apparently his uh, Carter Wong? He th- did not know that this was a comedy. He thought it was a straight up like. He played it like that. Yes, he did. He played it really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we have uh, Victor Wong as Egg Shen. He was amazing. The yes. very wise man, Egg Shen. The, the, I love the opening sequence. Of of him telling the, the, this the lawyer, beautiful Chinatown you see here before you, yeah, telling the lawyer that not everything is what he what seems to be. Oh, and, oh, that yeah, yeah, the yeah not the tour bus, hands, yeah. yeah, the lightning in his hands. That, that I always was, forget that bit. It was kind of tacked on. I, yeah. I feel that it was part of a story that probably would have picked up at the end, but for one reason, editorial reason or another, it got cut. Well, the like, ori- we would have gone back to that scene somewhere. The original screenplay was a western set in the eighteen eighties. 
uh, amid the amid the a lot of the um, the Asian uh, taking of yeah, Asian yeah, yeah. people and and communities. At the railroad, yeah, yeah, and the and the railroads. And the studios were like, you know, we we kind of want to go with a campy like kung fu movie, but more set in today. So the original writers, it went through a couple iterations of writers. Sounds like it, you know, yeah. big change. I know yeah. that stagecoach to of... semi. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that there was a lot of back and forth between how the movie was written and how Carpenter had planned to direct it, and mm-hmm. what the studio was expecting they were going to be getting. Which is was them kind of like pitching Burton as the hero. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I suspect that that was probably added on to kind of like no matter what happened, this happy. This may have just been a point where one of those rare instances where the committee worked. Yeah. Because if the original idea was a stagecoach drama set in the 1800s, I'm really glad they didn't do that. Well, they were also uh, in a bind for time to get it released because around the same time, Eddie Murphy's The Golden Child was being filmed Mm -hmm. and there was feelings that they were very similar movies no i don't think that they are but just similar in some way and that was one person being funny yeah in the golden child which was a good movie it was a good movie yeah it has you know it has the lannister uh in it Uh, yeah what's his name but this is everyone everyone is silly or funny and they have that little hand motion like their little asian thumbs up (laughs) (laughs) And you know, it was a big moment for Jack when he got one of those in the elevator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like when they drink from the, what was it, the the six demon bag. Yes. <laughs> What's in the six demon bag? Oh. <laughs> but, Earth, <laughs> what wind, fire, <laughs> all that kind of thing. But uh, they have this drink and they're, they're like, like and they're, they're drunk and like, I don't know, maybe there's a little molly in it or something because they start touching each other. Like, yeah, good on you, buddy. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> I kind of felt that that was like a, an homage to the, you know, what everybody understands as elevator awkwardness. Mm-hmm. Like, because they're just standing there, just looking around. Yeah, I'm kind of like. I don't know how many of you have ever done hard drugs, but there is a moment as you're coming up. Where you just you you feel this uh where where you feel this this wave of euphoria and you're like, Oh hey, how you doing? Oh. Yeah, we're all here together. We're all doing this. That's it's almost Do you that, feel it? Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy. That, that's <laughs> almost the drunk I, I God I love you. It's a bit more than the drunk well, is yeah, what I, I was seeing. I, I was seeing some people here who have eaten a certain specific Chinese herb or some dried rabbit's foot, mm-hmm. which would be illegal here in the U.S. <laughs> and th- those were people getting high. Oh, yeah. Like, really, really it was Even high. as a kid, it wasn't lost on me. So, yeah, they got high. Well, you know, that's what a six demon bag does. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love when they're going through the uh, the, the smoky underworld and yay for smoke machine. Mm-hmm. I, I love that they, they go it this way. Right, they they just walk down it, and the camera's behind them as they go down the path. Matthew is making, hand and then motion. they yeah. <laughs> and then they switch the camera angle so that they're walking along the, the same. It's the same exact path. Yeah, right next to it. I don't know, it's, it's like a great we've trick. got we've got thirty feet of this, and we have to do it in about sixteen angles. Yeah, we so. got to make it count. Got to make it. count. It was fantastic, and I also like the uh, um, where he's what is that? He's like black blood of the earth. You mean oil? I mean black blood of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, it's not. It's not whatever you see. It's what I'm telling you. It exactly. Is. Yeah. And then we have <laughs> oh Victor oh Egg Shen, lawful well, good, lawful good. Yeah. I'll go with that. Yeah. Okay. I can. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, lawful good with personality. Yeah. Yep. They have a lot of personality. Not lawful stupid. No. And then we have Kate Burton who played Margot Litzenberger, who was the journalist that we yes. talked about, the redheaded journalist. Um. Befuddled? Is there hard to chaotic? Get I kind of, I'm yeah. just going to go with NPC chaotic in good. My opinion. She's uh, to me, she was an NPC. Yeah, yeah. She the was DM was running her. Yeah. Yep. Uh, somebody same, didn't. Somebody didn't show up for the session. And yeah, same with Miao Yen. I, I yeah, think. Miao Yen was totally in it. She, well, she was the reason. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, she she, yeah, she, she was wasn't the MacGuffin. character. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then we have, um, then we have Donald Lee as Eddie Lee. Yeah, he was in it enough. I I was going to go with uh, chaotic good with him as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He fought well. Yeah. Uh, and then he had his own tiny little love arc with, uh, with the reporter. Yeah. Which is, which was good. Which was good. I, I love the, uh, I love the part where they're in the elevator and he's translating yeah. from, uh, from Thunder about, you know, the, the, the shipping and everything. And then they're just like, is, is there, am I getting sleepy or yeah, whatever? And then, yeah, he just and then they just fucking them. go out. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're done. 
And then there, uh, another thing that I, one of the places that I liked was when they woke up in the, in the, what, the realm of the, the, the seven hells. Oh, it's not the seven hells. They actually name five of them. Oh, yeah. I've written them all down just in case you want to hear them. <laughs> Please do. Yes. All right. Uh, the title of this little thing is called The Chinese Have a Lot of Hells, which is what Egg says earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the hell of cut to pieces. Mm-hmm. There's the hell of boiling oil. He's actually written this down. This is the hell of the upside down sinners. Yep. That's where they were. The hell where people are skinned alive, Mr. Button. And when he, they're freeing the ladies from the lady guards mm-hmm. and uh, he's yelling at them, he goes, you go to the hell of the horny dragon, <laughs> which is a hell I want to see. And I think I have in a certain hentai. You know, I, I think I think t- if today I don't want to go to that hell, Sorry. I think this would be like a great video game with today's graphics. And you'd have to go to like every realm to do something to like get something for Meow Ying and then. 18 plus for the hell of the horny dragon. <laughs> that sounds like the old Nintendo game Kung Fu, where oh, you just God, basically oh, fought your way. Yeah. Horrible. You just punched and kicked your yeah. way yeah. through. Just a like side scroll, like, like nine scroll. or ten yeah. guys. Punch, punch, kick, punch, one... kick, pick, yeah. cut, punch, punch, punch. That game was awfully oh, hard. God. Karate Champ was my preferred game over because mm-hmm. they were both out around the same time. Uh, then we have uh, we have Thunder, Rain, and Lightning, played by Carter Wong as Thunder. Peter Kwong as Rain and James Pax as Lightning, basically Raiden. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was, was Raiden, Raiden. Yeah. with cat claws. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> scratch your back. No, 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 no. He is the one with the the actual back scratchers. Yeah. Oh. And he, oh, yeah. Who is the one with the spinning spoons? Uh, I think that was <sighs> one of them. Uh, held their hands up into the. Yeah, that spinning. was. Uh, I think that was Rain. That was Rain. Yeah, I think Rain did it. That uh, was the swordsman. I think. He was the swordsman no, who had the was fight. A, no, Thunder was... No, uh, thund- Thunder was not the swordsman. The th- thunder the th- was th- had the long hair. Yeah, that, I think that was Rain. Okay, he was the That elf. was Rain? Yeah, he was yeah, the definitely. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> like, when they're they're wiping their minds, yeah. the bride's wives, and he does this, like, stork step as uh-huh. he does his little, like... Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that that was very elf. He was yeah. he was an elf. Dark 100%. elf. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can agree with that. Um, uh, I'm just going to say those are... Uh, those are monsters, technically. So yeah, they're I'm demons. Not, yeah. yeah, minor demons. So yeah, yeah. And then we had Meow Yin, which we talked about as an NPC. Eh, yeah. Uh, and then it did uh, very well. I love when the, you know, when you think of a uh, of a car chase. Like mm-hmm. let's say you've watched Fast, one of the Fast and Furiouses lately, mm-hmm. and you're used to seeing a modern car go mm-hmm. around a corner. I think it was so good. That in the 80s, that Trans Am where they initially grab her and put her in the trunk mm-hmm. was the fast car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. Because the way they filmed that, of that that thing coming around the corner like they did, mm-hmm. oh, man, that thing would have gone ass over tea kettle. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Take no it. traction control, <laughs> no, rear wheel man. drive. <laughs> I mean, oh, that my thing God. was gone with on with that a, first turn. <laughs> with a 350 under the hood, probably. Yeah. yeah that, that, but uh, mm. again, the, the same speed because it's showing the speed and it's, they dive out of the way as yeah. Yeah, goes and, and, then, and, the and then and then you immediately go into the into the back with with Miao Yen mm-hmm. just just for a brief, brief flash one second you see her bump up and yeah. down with it and I mean it's the moments like that that made this a great great piece of cinematography because it it's jumping around the scene it's getting everyone's reaction mm-hmm. but it's it's not doing it in a boring way which you feel like you don't even pick it up but as you're watching it you feel like it's over explaining it mm-hmm. it's just these flashes real fast. That, and it paints this beautiful picture. It, it, that's a good note. You know, the, the speed of everything and the transitions of everything. I I forget, and this is going to be horrible because I'm a writer. The writer that made comment that one of the things that he did with his, uh, with his writing style was that every every ten pages there had to be a fight. There had to be something fast paced. Yeah. And so it was always up down, up down, up down. And I think John Carpenter he does that with his movies very well. Yeah. There is a there's a and I think a lot of directors today have picked up on that. You can tell an effective story not just by the use of explosions, but just by the pacing and the cutting. We talked about John Wick last time, yeah, and 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 interlacing the the some of the scenes together, like with Aurelio and and what was going on with the car, uh, and just how that builds tension. And I think, yeah, this there was a lot of tension building through this movie with a really well written banter yeah. as well. So I, it had a beholder in it. Yeah, it did, which was apparently the the most expensive and most difficult uh, special effect the that they had made yeah. out of the whole movie. 
Was that stop motion? I feel like it was stop motion. Um, no, they actually they've made a an actual puppet that had animatronics. Oh, really? And then they put it on like a like a green screen, but it yeah. just did not want to work. I'll bet. most of the time because it was small. Yeah, and then they did the tongue. That was all you know weird at the yeah. end, but yeah, it just did not want to work in the way that they had anticipated, and uh, it was the most expensive prop that they had in the whole movie. Yeah. Like by several thousand dollars. My personal favorite is at the very end, he just kisses Gracie mm-hmm. and he swaggers in in front of Low Pan. Oh, yeah. And he's got the lipstick all over his face. And she's trying to, like, no, no, no. That's, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> and he's delivering this, oh, I'm a tough guy. Rah, 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 rah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it looks like fucking Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. There's so many parts of this movie. I mean, we could probably sit here and go beat by beat for this whole movie and and talk about it. Yeah. The Neon Wedding. Oh, the Neon Wedding was great. Burning Jack. their hands on the yeah. sword blade. Why, getting... He just had this weird-ass escalator in his basement. That came out of a belly of his god. Yeah. yeah he had an escalator. Like, yeah. As you do. In a fucking escalator. Those wanna, are expensive, I wanna dog. See, I want to <laughs> see, like, the map of, like, the underworld because... Who installed it? <laughs> Who installed I, that I escalator? I want to see the map layout of like his entire underground palace. Yeah. Because he had one room that had statues. They had the seven hells apparently someplace, you know, that were being represented. They had his god, you know, the shrine to his god, his personal rooms. The worst part is, is that I know I'm missing so many good quotes. Like I've reached the end of the quotes. I, I paused. <laughs> yeah. but, there's, down, there, but there's so lot. many. Yeah. yeah. What do you want me to do? Chew through it? I mean, is there's yeah, you know, it's just uh, it's so good. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, the movie did not do well in the theaters. It did not. It has a great cult following, and it's like one of the best. Did it make its money back? Oh God, no. Oh, no, really? it had a you no. Know, it had a twenty five million dollar budget, and it only made eleven. It's got to have made more than that. Oh yeah, now it has. But the but uh, yeah, then it was only twenty five million. That's a damn shame. But, I mean, they just pulled it off Netflix, and it was there for years. I don't know oh, what Netflix gives you. Huh. I mean, probably more than Amazon, because Amazon's got some shit on it. Mm-hmm. Like, really bad, bad movies. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's really much, bad movies. As much as I... It does give me hope as a filmmaker, though. I'm like, if this shit can get on Amazon, this was filmed on a handy cam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can get something on there. And a lot of people are filming on their fucking iPhones now. Yeah. It didn't I'm have iPhone quality. Shit. iPhone quality movies. Yeah, on so Amazon That's like, oh, okay, this has a really cool trailer and a really cool poster. I'll check Editing. it out. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, it's awful. Mm. Yeah. Oh, no, do not want. How do I remove this from my history? <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we, we talked about with, um, and I had I have this question for you, Nathaniel, because we, we talked a lot about this with thir- 13 Assassins, about... Uh, committing the, and you'll f- forgive my pronunciation, uh, seppuku? Is that? Okay. Seppuku. Seppuku. Isn't it? Seppuku? Okay. Um, and the, and the, the whole honor thing. So at the end of the movie, Thunder, he sees Lopan dead, uh, because he's become mortal and he's got a blade now stuck through his head because Jack Burton is amazing. He rolled a natural 20 on that, you know, so. Oh, when um, he like caught it and threw it's it. It's right all in the back. reflex. Yeah. That was just, yeah. that was. One of my favorite boss fights ever. Oh, it was great. Hey, did you ever see the movie Wizards? Oh, yeah. The anime. I movie? love Wizards. Yeah. The boss fight in Wizards yeah. is yeah, the yeah, top. Yeah. It is the best boss fight of anything ever. And this one comes a very close second. So yeah. your thought on this, because Thunder, he sees he sees Lopan, his his boss, his the person yeah. he's bound to, is now dead. And he gets so angry, he blows himself up. Like, he literally blows himself up. So... Do you both of you guys think that's is that no, is he because angry because a couple of reasons uh, seppuku is a Japanese thing okay and this is a uh, Chinese culture okay all right so I'm um, wrong there I'm sorry for being culturally and, ignorant and the other part is that he's a demon technically mm-hmm. yeah uh, that that might just be the the death of uh, of his like he has to leave this plane in a D and D way okay. Like, he may have time for a final quick fight, but he's on his way out. All right. That was his gateway to that world. Okay. Is the way right. I saw it, personally. I just saw it as, like, yeah, the servants realizing that their master was dead. They're like, well, you know, we're probably going to die, so we're going to destroy whoever it was that just killed our master. Right. Like, lightning yeah. was just zapping everything. He didn't care. I'm just I going back yeah. to my demon realm, so I'm going to 
fuck that fucking mm-hmm. statue and fuck that wall and fuck that little bit of ceiling over there. <laughs> yeah. And then going up the... Yeah, know, yeah. Going up the... Gets a Buddha what, dropped what, on his head. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering about that. How did the other one die? Uh, we had the explosion. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, the the oh, fighter um, killed one um, with a sword. Okay. Tossed it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah Wang Wang yeah. tossed over his head in that. That was amazing aerial. That was the dumbest thing. No, what do you mean that was dumb? Come Come on. Oh, oh, no, no. But then then they both leap the same way and they have long clang, 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 clang. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's like, (laughs) that was was amazing. Like, the whole movie is ridiculous. Oh, no, no, no. It was funny, but it was so dumb. Uh, What what do you think? Clang, 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 clang. clang. This is what Chinese PCP can do to you. You see, he's not a demon. (laughs) That's a seven demon bag right there. Yes, seven demon bag strength. You notice because immediately. Everyone after they took that was able to fight much harder yeah. than they were, say, in the streets. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone was pretty decent. Even that weird rock 'em sock 'em robot thing. That oh, yeah. oh, the, the avatar, avatar fighting. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah, the lightsaber <laughs> avatar <laughs> finger fighting. Yeah, and the, ac- the, the willow acorn thing. Well, yeah. you figure video yeah. games had just come out. Where you just got the Nintendo, mm-hmm. which was two fingers together yeah. on the back side of the controller and then just thumbs mm-hmm. like you did you didn't have forward triggers yet no not just, yet no yeah i saw and, that immediately yeah, I was yeah. Like, oh, that, that, that was an yeah. nes right there <laughs> yeah because i think yeah. it was this, the super nintendo was when you actually then they put the top i think super nintendo had a top button didn't it yes it did it did have a front trigger yeah, yeah. i think they're just one on either side shoulder yeah. buttons yeah, yeah. yeah. okay but uh, no that was that was nes era straight yeah so, oh yeah that was yeah. I'm playing a video game. <laughs> you never could beat me, Egg Shen. <laughs> Which I love because that 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 says how old Egg Shen is. Because they yeah. don't ever really go into the, the too much of the background of Egg Shen, just that he's been there. Well, he's a peasant too. He does peasant wizardry. Yeah, there is that comment. But I, I just like that that comment of you never could beat me, knowing yeah. that they've they've been going at it for like millennia, apparently. Yeah. So which was pretty awesome, in my yeah. opinion. I, I like I like ancient feuds. It yeah. it adds weight to a story, yes, especially a silly story. It helps. Yeah, it does. I did. I I liked in the the part where where Jack goes into the into the brothel and he like totally fails his role. You know, I'm look. I was wondering if you had a girl with green eyes. And she's like, <laughs> it's like, it's 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 one of those situations where the bard looks at the DM and says, "All right, I'm going to try and bluff her." And the DM says, "Okay, how? Well, can I roll? No." You cannot roll. <laughs> You're going to tell me how. Where's the girl with green eyes? <laughs> and, 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 and her is like poorly. the DM, like, and that's how you do oh, it. We're oh, gonna yeah. go this route. Okay. Yeah. I hate it when they when they put the dice first. I hate it. When oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, no. Well, no I'm gonna use me. my arcana to do this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna nature that. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? Tell me. T- you gonna nature it? What? What? <laughs> how do you nature it? Do you just pee on it? I turn into a tree. (laughs) (laughs) Smells like asparagus. Oh, God. Yeah. That's a sore spot for me. Yeah. This was a very D&D game. I I, I honestly think that a... uh, a lot of role playing games can work for this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I I think hit it hit it stayed. I think uh, there's the one and Nathaniel and I are actually in agreement on this one. Mm-hmm. There is one game that <laughs> outshines them all for this we, particular we, we, movie. We, I think it hit it stayed the Western Deadlands would have been perfect for it. Yeah, but I'm I'm really glad it didn't stay yeah, the Western. Yeah, I'm really glad that it wasn't a Western either. I mean I I've after I found that out, I've I've sat and like thought about it a lot. Like could this have worked as a Western? And in some aspects it could have, but it just it wouldn't have had the same feel. No. I mean Carpenter no. would have done it and it would have had Carpenter all over it, but it just it wouldn't have I wonder if he still would have done the music. And if so, what would that have sounded like? Has John Carpenter done a Western? I don't, no, I don't think so. He always does the music, right? That was his Usually, thing for a while, yeah, right? Yeah. I can't even imagine it. I'm sitting here trying. Because you're thinking, not only is it a Western, but it's an 80s Western. <laughs> The closest thing I can think of, see, in my brain, the closest thing I can think of to an 80s Western is Bad at the Future Part 3. Like that, <laughs> that's what's happening in my brain. And that was the 90s, I think, yeah. anyway. But I'm, that's where I'm going. I can't think of a, I can't think of an 80s Western. Jesus Christ. Wow. I, I think Unforgiven. Right. I think that was 80s. No, that was 90s, too. Was it? Yeah. Early 90s. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was. I think I was old enough to know who Clint Eastwood was at that time. Yeah, I mean, they were all really bad. I grew up like, watching I'm pretty all sure like Steven Seagal so. did one, but 
Oh God, it I was hope bad. Not. Well, I, okay. Well, all right. Well, you had Young Guns. That was a that's an eighties western. Okay. Um, and let's yeah, see. Had, no, I you also have qu- quick, quick, yeah, qu- quickly down under. That's another. Never oh. Never I liked that. it. I just like because it has Alan Rickman in it. So I, yeah. as the bad guy, I uh, I don't want to see a Young Guns version of Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, I'm glad we got what we got. Clint yeah. Eastwood's Pale Rider was mid eighties, like a year it. before Big Trouble. Um, I'm not much of a cowboy person. Man from Snowy River, Three Amigos. There you go. Yeah, I'm glad we got what we got. <laughs> I, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I think yeah. this this could have, if it were a western, made an interesting follow up to Thirteen Assassins based on the plot that you came up with last time. The Go to America. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That would work. That definitely though, would work. though it is interesting. Uh, who somebody said something else about this. That it was the beginning of was it Fifth Element? What, what that you, was me. That, that was, was us talking what, what before was Dusty showed up. I had said that Egg Shin in this. Oh movie, yeah, 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 in yeah, This yeah. movie mm-hmm. would have made an if he was immortal mm-hmm. and he lived a long time could have been easily made a guest appearance as the Chinese food delivery man in oh, Fifth right. Element. Yeah, you yeah. are fire! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good philosophy. One day, we're going to have to sit down, drink an enormous amount of bourbon, and string every movie we've done together. You mean like make it a, like a meta universe? Like yeah. Every, oh, my we're, God. We're going to have to find commonalities oh, and tie them all together. I love and we, this we, idea. We should do that before we get too many more movies on the table. Yeah. Because this, yeah. Because we'll have to tie them some way to Richard Belzer. Is he? No, we tie him to Kevin Bacon. No, Belzer. Are you familiar with the yeah, Belzer verse? Bel- yeah, I know Belzer. It's a uh, character from uh, Law and Order. Mm-hmm. There are so many connections through so many shows and movies through a character, Richard Belzer. Mm. And he, uh, that actor, the actor has been in more television shows as that character than any other actor as any other character ever and he's made guest appearances as that character and because his character has been not as it appeared or uh, interfaced with different uh shows whatnot that means those shows are all part of the same canon Right, right right which connects everything in reality to richard belzer and thus (laughs) <laughs> the bells are thus uh saying elsewhere and thus everything on television is the imagination of an autistic child all right we can tie it however you want i just, <laughs> I just want to put the movies together um what else you got for us dusty i didn't do bu- i'm not doing bullet points anymore so all right you got anything <laughs> anybody got anything else they want to bring up this is one of my favorite movies of all time so what, what else i mean with you what else did, what else do you like about this i mean oh I like the color. I like the hair. I like everyone's quips. I like the way it was filmed. I like the cinematography. Didn't care so much for the soundtrack, but I find it endearing mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Well, I, no, nobody watches the credits. Um, <laughs> well, thanks to Marvel, now everybody stays and watches credits. Oh, they weren't the first to do that. Yeah, but, no, but um, they popularized it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's. I just. I, I love everything about this movie, but I think what I like about it best is that. Everyone quips back and mm-hmm. forth. Everyone, everyone has their moment. Mm-hmm. There's dialogue um, banter. Yeah, yeah. and and nobody, uh, except for the the hero Jack, mm-hmm. no one is the fall guy. There there are no stupid people, except for the hero who is an idiot, but still manages to kill some people. Still manages to be helpful. Just kind of blunders around. It, it's kind of a, a drunken master scenario. He just he blunders his way to victory. Hmm. And I, I like that, that everyone else is, is relatively competent. Um, they're good at what they do. Decent street fighters, decent amount of kung fu. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just I, I, I like that everyone has their funny moment and no one has to play the fall guy because the hero is the fall guy. It's not the stupid sidekick. The hero is the stupid sidekick. Yeah. And, and you made mention about about how you felt the, the, the beginning with Shen was kind of felt like it was shoehorned back. Yeah, in. I feel there was more to that. That was shot after, and the studio was like, we need to have more to, that shows Jack Burton more of a hero because they didn't have that. So that's why that right. whole making it seem, you know, he was, you know, a very oh, yeah. courageous man. He runs into man. a room, and he's about to stop everything by firing his gun in the air. It knocks loose the tile, <laughs> hits him unconscious, and he's out for, like, the first five minutes of the fight. I, I mean, 
I did feel bad though, uh, you know, watching this know and, and knowing that Kurt Russell was like led to believe it was going to be like the biggest movie of 1986, and it and it and it wasn't. It did not happen. At you all. know, if if you're disappointed after you sit down to the premiere screening of this, mm-hmm. then you're just dumb. Yeah, because th- this was a great movie when it came out. It is a great movie today. Oh yeah. Um. It it ranks in like my top ten. If if 10, it's before 15, it's yeah. if it's before it's time and it's not able to be appreciated, well, that's too bad. I mean, there there are even back then there was VHS. You're I, gonna be fine. I think <laughs> you know? I think Carpenter has a lot of those movies where they're not they're not up to public opinion when they come out, but years later they're they're amazing. Yeah, the thing is one of them. This is another one of them. I still don't like Nightbreed, but a lot of people do, like Nathaniel here. <laughs> Nathaniel does like him some Nightbreed. <laughs> and uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, wants to make do a remake of Big Trouble and play Jack Burton, which I'm totally on on board for. He does have a kind no, of no, offbeat I don't want humor. a remake. No. no, no, no this is no, one of the no very remakes. few that I'm okay with. Can we stop with remakes, I agree Hollywood. with you. I agree Let good completely. things exist on their own. Do homages. Do follow ups, but stop with the remakes. Come up with some new shit. I do agree with you, uh, but this is one of the few times where I can I can see someone with the Rock who doesn't his characters don't take themselves seriously enough. I think he he's could almost play, too big. I don't know that he could that pull off the idiot. any man though. He's not an every man though. I mean, he's too fucking big. Yeah, that's he's like big. that's like casting Arnold Schwarzenegger as a clerk. Who fights off robbers? No one's gonna buy that shit. <laughs> I mean, he's just too big. Jason Stratham would be good as a as a redo on this. He would, but he's, he's too old now. Yeah, he's like nineties Jason Statham. Yeah, but not now. It's it's too old. Okay, so okay, who would you cast? I it, my movie was already cast and produced. <laughs> I yeah, I, I'm. I, no. I, all right, all right. An I don't occasional need to cast remake Jack is, is is a good thing, but I I think this stands well enough on its own. If I was them, I would just re-release it in theaters. Yeah, Josh Holloway, who's that? He was Sawyer in Lost. I see. I never watched Lost. I oh, could have cared. Good. I watched the first two episodes. And I think he's Gambit. Maybe I oh, watched the first two episodes Josh of Lost. Holloway, and I said, you know what? I think when this ends, there are spoilers. Well, well this isn't. They're a show all gonna Lost. fucking die. <laughs> And it's going to be about time travel. That's fine, but Josh Holloway, I think, is a good actor. I like I think how you can cut pull me off on the look. <laughs> Someone has. That's, we're not going down the lost <laughs> hole. It, it, no, that's fine. That's if, fine. If I, you were doing it, they'd have to have a slight draw. Yeah, like a natural slight draw. Yeah, Josh could do it. Mm. Sawyer was a draw. Yeah, Gambit's a draw. I think he could do it. It's the only thing I can think of because I don't want to think about it because Jack Burton, <laughs> Kurt Russell, I, I never agree. need another I agree. I do. This is, this is a thing and complete yeah. in and of itself. Yes. It doesn't need to so be. So we are all in agreement that this is a great movie. Yes. And it's movie. way ahead of its time. So how many Pork Chop Expresses or how many low pans? <laughs> oh, oh our rating system. Yes, our rating right, right, system. Right. Oh. It's an eighteen wheeler, so that's eighteen. <laughs> or do you want to do low pans? You like do like like out of ten low pans? How many girls with green eyes would you give this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to quantify something with women. It's weird. Well, you just made it weird. <laughs> <laughs> awkward. Um, what what should we use as the as the how how many how many hells? Oh. So there's seven hells. There's seven hells. Okay. So how many of the seven? Hell- I'm seven to seven. I You're think seven it's to seven. All right. Uh, I'm gonna give it six, and that's purely f- because of the music. I'm gonna not give it a knockdown for the music. I'm giving it seven. I think the music was good. I, yeah. I can't fault oh, okay. that final okay, let me, awful let me, song. Let me sub it, down that. The it's time. the song. It's the song because yeah. the the synthesizers through the movie are good. It's that song. So that song six and a half at the hells. end. Big Six and a half hells. Like the worst fucking thing. <laughs> so ever you give it written. seven. Seven. Nathaniel gives it seven. I give it six and a half hells. That's, that's still a lot of hell. it up. That's that's <laughs> 21, 20, 20. 20.5 out of 21 hells. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get into the gaming stuff here in just a few moments. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a few moments. All right. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 
fuzzy dice that go in your mirror. That's good stuff. If, you, uh, <laughs> if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. Okay, back from the break. We're here to turn this movie into a game, yes. or at least steal some ideas from it to inspire our own games and our own tabletop play. So I'd like to, I want to kick things off with something that is really cool that I found online that I've had stuck in my head now for uh, weeks since we started uh, talking about putting this movie on the schedule. Are Both of you are familiar with the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Yeah. yeah. I actually have, really like that one. Have yeah, you so seen League of Extraordinary Gentlemen 1980s edition? I have not. No. Okay. Well, uh, there's a series of pictures, and uh, here is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen 1980s edition. Oh, wow. It's got <laughs> Mr. T, Doc nice. Brown, uh, MacGyver. Uh, the, that's, she's, that's from Flashdance. Yeah. And Jack Burton. And Jack Burton. That was hot at the time. Yeah. Now, there's another fella online. Was that my... done by the Archer people? That looks like looks that's like Archer him. drawn. I, I don't know who did it, but I know that there was like some comics groups involved in it. There, mm. there might actually even be a comic based on it. I don't know. But I've seen the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen 1970s as well. It has like Evil Knievel in it. There's the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen 1990s. Here's, here's one from 1996. Yeah. It's got uh, Zach from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Uh, it's got, uh, what, Scully from X-Files. It has Edward Scissorhands. I don't know who the other emo goth woman is. I think she's... I, I, I don't actually know who and I don't is. know who the guy with the shotgun is. Not very extraordinary. Apparently. Uh, well, the that's Tombstone, isn't it? I saw the brown jacket, and I was like, oh, it's Malcolm. Yeah, Lynch. I don't know who the guy <laughs> That's what I thought. It. <laughs> Initially, I'm, but, yeah, but yeah. that was too early. Yeah, but so. yeah, so there's people who have done all of these things and all of these themed versions of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a fellow on my online gaming circle named Carl Kiesler, and he is a Savage Worlds GM who was well known for the game production that he puts on when he runs a game at a convention, mm -hmm. right? So he will put together stand-ups, character sheets, homemade miniatures, sets, battle maps, tokens. I do love sets. Yeah, every, so do I. He'll put these things together to fit a theme. Uh, he did one that was... Uh, he, he's done a number of 1980s themes when... Uh, including like, I think he had like the game, the whole thing came in a VHS cartridge and he <laughs> folded it out and whatnot. Cool. I, I could be misremembering some of these, but I do know specifically that he ran a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in the 1980s game mm -hmm. with Jack Burton as one of nice. the characters. That's awesome. And that is why, uh, that's got me thinking, of course, heavily of Savage Worlds. And it's got me thinking of the, the themes of this game that we can bring to the table. So mm -hmm. before we go into your, your, your cool. setup here. What about this game? What about this movie? Do you want to play? Like, what about this movie inspires a game for you? Uh, it's it's a party. Yeah, the whole I mean, party thing was great. You you have your wizard. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have your bard. You have your warrior. Uh huh. Um. <laughs> uh, you know, it's 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 all there. Y you have um, you have your rogue. Yeah, there's a rogue there. Um, it's who's the rogue? Honestly, I would I I'm I'm cro I'm a, I cross on that one. It's either the journalist or it's uh Burton's buddy cuz he could be a rogue also, I think. No, he was a fighter. I think he was more of a rogue. The, just the, the way he the main dude? Just yeah. the, just the, just the oh, way he moved. I just the way he moved, he was always I Oh, was, it's just a good fighter. I just <laughs> looked at, I looked at him Fighters more as a rogue. Fast, I looked at him more as a, as a rogue because he was trying he was also trying to hustle Jack in the beginning, like rogues do. Yeah, Conan also gambled. Yeah, so did Fafford. Mm -hmm. I I think yeah. he's a rogue. I think he. Uh, if you want a multi class, he's a he's a rogue fighter. Oh. He took on that entire group of enemies by yeah. himself. I've Conf seen rogues do that fate, in games, but straight face to face. Like, All right, no, no, wait a second. Tactics. Let's get into this. Okay, yeah. so why why are you why are you standing on rogue? What did he do that that struck you as rogue as beyond fighter? 
as in, as opposed to fighting. Well, he was trying to hustle his buddy in the beginning, which most rogues do. Uh, he always kept to the shadows through through most of the movie. No, he was dashing through doorways. Yeah, he, no, was, he, he was up front the whole time. I wasn't, no, I, I wasn't I, seeing I the... I took the... Jack as more out in the front and him kind of on... Even though he was fighting people front to, you know, face to face, he was still on the outer perimeter oh, to no, get Jack around. Jack was drawing the attention. Yeah, Jack clearly. was drawing the attention, but he was going around those people to, like, stab them in the back. What? Well, not literally, but that's how I always saw the character. No. Huh. I mean, no, I, co- I completely disagree. I okay, was just no, that's fine. As to, your, uh, as to your rationale. Okay. Um... I don't know that there's, I mean, it was a definitely fighter centric mm-hmm. and it was one of those, there, there wasn't a priest like no. you're going down, you're just dead and forgotten. Like when the, uh, the beast comes out of the tunnel, bites, uh, one of the yellow turbans and drags him back into the tunnel. Mm-hmm. They don't go in to save him or to help him. They're like, you come out no more. <laughs> just closes the door and yeah. that guy's dead. Yeah. He's gone. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Completely gone. Digest for a thousand years. That's your problem. Oh, <laughs> oh it's like in a Sarlacc yeah. pit. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, we got a party. We have and a beholder. What mm-hmm. and a beholder? Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got like you know really cool pulpy kind of action. Oh, you also have a dungeon. I'm sorry, I didn't that's, identify that. that so was that, 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 that's the dungeon. big thing that I really like that would be playable for me is that I made comment a little bit ago in the first part of wanting to see the map of everything. Yeah, and that I would love to see that just just getting finding the secret passages down into the underworld and then playing in the underworld. You know how I always say that I'm not going to do the movie? I would be completely content to do this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> if it was a module, it's not what I have written, it's not what yeah. I have written for you our listeners at home. But if somebody out there wants to produce this module, I would be more than happy to run well, through. Well, th- that'd be great. This to me and and one of my my favorite box systems from AD&D uh, was uh, I'm kind of forgetting the actual name. Uh, Under Under Mountain. Oh yeah, yeah. Fucking, no, it's so yeah, it's big. Good. Oh my god, I loved it. it. Has it's just and this this is kind of like a small corner of. Oh, this is just the entrance. Yeah, yeah, this is just like one. If this whole table were Under Mountain, this is the it's, parlor. It's, it's, it's this. It's this little sticker right here. Yeah. <laughs> this was definitely a dungeon crawl. Yeah, you definitely loved it. had the party going down in the dungeon. What's good is that you had a reason to go into the dungeon. Mm-hmm. There was definitely a boss at the end, and in true classic form, once you defeat the boss on the way out, the dungeon is falls apart. Yeah. You. yeah, you got to run through. This you, had, is... you had three level bosses also. Yeah, you good. had mini bosses. Uh, you know, y- this was random encounter at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the monster, the throne room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had the throne room with all with the rose. Of statues, yeah. So much of this was. Uh, oh, and in true D and D, old school D and D fashion, you don't just go into the dungeon once. Yeah, they make you dip multiple out, you forays in. yeah. into yeah. that dungeon. Shit, resupply, heal up. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, your dungeon was your campaign. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you just didn't go into the dungeon, defeat it, and come out. No, you had a dungeon that had multiple levels, and chances are you're going to be going through that dungeon for a year or more of your yeah. life. Mm-hmm. And and hopefully people didn't move around. Well, yeah. I I had a rough DM who was very logical once upon a time. Yeah. <laughs> we eventually diverted a stream. What? I, okay, I want crazy. I want to hear this story. I want to hear this story. Yeah. They, they kept all right. It was at the bottom of a valley, mm-hmm. right? And it was just honeycombed into the valley. Okay, so. uh we kept trying to, as you were saying, go back in. Mm-hmm. Um, but monsters apparently in the real world, real world, air quotes, quotes. don't sit in the room where they're assigned once <laughs> you leave. Yeah. There is no such thing as cleared territory. Yeah. Um, and we kept having to fight our way back through the same thing. And then, you know, we'd reach the end of what we had and we'd have to run the fuck out. Mm-hmm. And we go back in and we weren't getting anywhere in it. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, <laughs> so we just got tired of that after about five, and we uh, we took some of the loot and we hired a band of dwarves to seal out one end, and the same band then diverted a, a major river, and we drowned them <laughs> in their holes. I this love sounds, that. I <laughs> love that. This sounds like it could be straight out of the pages of the Hackmaster comics. Or oh yeah, Nights at the Dinner Table. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, this is classic. What the hell have my players decided to have come up I, with? I, yep. I have yeah. to take credit for that one. That one was actually me. Um, and I, I often do things like that. I'm like, because I, I tend to think logically about problems. Yeah, real world, real world. And if, if the DM is just fucking with me, I'll I'll let a DM fuck with me. But if that DM continues Mm -hmm. to fuck with me in a, in a way that makes it, that makes it 
to the borders of boring or unplayable, mm-hmm. I I start thinking outside the box. And I, I do weird things. Well, at least in that situation, the rooms were repopulating for a reason. Because, oh, yeah. Because, you know, it's a, it's, an, it's, it's a habitat. To be fair, yeah. we had cut into their birth-death ratio, though. I mean, <laughs> there should not have been, um, un- unless the, uh, the, the, the lair was where, way bigger than we thought. Mm-hmm. But we had cut heavily into the species' uh, birth-death ratio. There's no way they could replace their numbers that fast. <laughs> oh maybe and it turns out they didn't <laughs> yeah well and then they all drowned so that that is very clever uh that is the opposite of jack burton thinking uh <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so this movie is, i like jack burton i'm not identifying with the fella the kind this movie is the way, kind of really easily approachable everybody anybody could have some kind of a buy-in into this story pitching something like this is not going to be hard mm-hmm. coming to your group and be like i want to play a uh, pulpy campy witty fairly humorous but at times serious dungeon crawl Mm -hmm. and you have instant buy-in you can do this in a modern setting such as big trouble in little china you can really you can do this in a corporate setting such as Shadowrun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do this in a D and D fantasy. You can do whatever. There's the, the honestly of it translates very well. There's yeah. not that much to break apart. Well, like, here. I, I mentioned, it's, if it would stay to Western Deadlands, would be perfect for it. Yeah, yeah Deadlands could work for it as well. There's there, then there's you know what's interesting is that there are very few hard Western RPGs. <clears throat> Aces and eights. Very that's, few. Yeah that's, yeah, that's a good one. There are some. I, I actually funny. can think of a a couple, but. There are very few. Most Western RPGs are Western with a twist. Mm-hmm. They're always like Western with wizards or Western with zombies well, yeah. or Western with steampunk. There's very few actual Western ones. I kind don't... of a side tangent because this wouldn't be a hard Western game. I'm no. not a fan of anything really steampunk. I like the aesthetic. I just don't like. Well, you don't want steampunk, Big Trouble, in Little China? No, you know? no, no. Governor? I... I'm gonna Jack doesn't drive a Zeppelin. Strangle you right now. <laughs> no airships. <laughs> no, no, Jack I... is a train operator on a steam train. Oh, God. A private steam it would work. train. But how do yeah. you steal it? Because that's the only reason. He's not going to help you us. No, 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 no. No, he steals Doc Brown's fucking shuttle <laughs> train. And when Doc they're Brown both, comes They're back. in the league. <laughs> they're both in the league. He steals it. All right. We have and just... calls it the Pork Chop <laughs> Express. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I was picturing a steam trunk, a steampunk train that lays its own tracks and pulls them up behind it. That's that's something really no, weird. That's yeah. uh, that's the reason why I fucking See? hate steampunk. <laughs> I am with you. I can't stand. I'm, I'm seeing that but... old GI Joe toy, the uh, the bridge layer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah something like that, but yeah. doubled. If if it if, could be done, it, I I would be more inclined if I had to go down the round of steam. Around the, the route of steampunk for this, you can't see this, of course, because this is audio. But <laughs> Dusty just looks like we fed him a something he's allergic to, and B just smells like old Roquefort. Oh my God. <laughs> he doesn't look happy. I could see like a steam-powered stagecoach, which would be kind of cool. You know, like an armored stagecoach with like a steam-powered Gatlin gun somewhere on that keeps failing him. And, yeah, I could see that. And he called that the Pork Chop Express. And and the reason why he called it Pork Chop Express is because he instead of like a dog or something, he would have an actual pig that it's he saved. It's just his horse. That he a pig that he saved. Uh, the horse thief is a common trope. You could yeah. do it that way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do that. But fucking Steve. <laughs> so this oh movie, my God, burn my eyes. The out, themes seriously. in this movie are so simple to grasp, so easily approachable and universal that there's not actually that much to break down here. This is an immediately gameable movie. Yeah, yeah. It can be ported to any setting. It has the classic tropes. It's got everything you need for any a any game, game will work for this. However. Any game would work for this. But Matthew, I understand you have a follow up campaign. I do. Um, like I said. Um, I'd prefer to run the module, but because I just want normally I just the wanna... module sucks. <laughs> yeah, but normally. this one I would this, run the, this yeah. module. This, yeah, this would be a great module by the book. So most of the uh, the villains have been banished back into the underworld. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here's here's the caveat that I took with this because there's not a lot immediately to go on for a villain. You have a demon yeti mm-hmm. basically clinging to the back of his truck. Yeah. Um. I will say this. Every time I have played uh, not a wizard, but a sorcerer, mm-hmm. I have always hidden my soul. 
Okay. As sorcerers are wont to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, this is more throughout heroic fantasy than gameable systems. Yeah. But um, recurring sorcerers in some of the epics like uh, Fafford and the Grey Mouse or Lord Mm -hmm. of the Rings, there there is an essential part that is hidden in something, uh, a quintessence. A quintessential? Yeah. A quintessence. 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 quintessence of the villain. Quintuplet? No. There are a series of D&D spells that enable a wizard to do that at oh, yeah. all levels. played an interesting yeah. necromancer once, and I'll tell that story at another time. But I owned everybody in the party. <laughs> uh, <laughs> As most necromancers do. Like their soul, my greatest triumph was the paladin. <laughs> but, um, okay, so uh, Lopan's mortal body was wait, wait, destroyed. What's, what's the name of this? Oh, Big Trouble in SeaWorld. Okay. So uh, this the movie takes place in California, mm-hmm. in uh, San Francisco. Yes. So yeah. I, I was thinking of things. You have like uh, Disney, and then you have SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. And I thought SeaWorld would be more fun because there's a lot of action. And there's Is there a, a SeaWorld in California? Yeah. 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 San oh, really? Diego. Yeah. Oh, I've only yeah. ever been to the one in Florida. Yeah. Okay. I was born in San Diego. There, there's a SeaWorld in San Diego. Um. Anyway. Uh, Lopan's mortal body was destroyed, so he did what any respectable Chinese black sorcerer would do. He hid his soul. Now, this goes through a series of fallbacks. His soul is, of course, initially entrusted to his three lieutenants. Um, Those lieutenants returned with him to the underworld, so it just gets kicked off down the spell chain until it eventually uh, lands in his smallest supernatural minion, Mm -hmm. which is the Demon Yeti, clinging to the back of his truck. Now, Jack made a delivery, oh, and I was very no. disappointed when I found out that that delivery was, in fact, Pig. Mm-hmm. Because the way I had this was Jack is going to SeaWorld to deliver fish, which we saw a ton of in the market. Yeah. Um, well, re- real quick to interrupt you. I'm sorry. The only way you really know that it's pigs is if you read the novelization. Yeah. Looking at the truck, it doesn't look like a pig trailer because pig no. trailers have to have ventilation. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so we I was can just go fish. with fish. Yeah, okay. You can just go yeah, with fish. I, I'm not accepting novelizations as canon. <laughs> Though I, I will say this. If there was a show that involved tossing live pigs to killer whales, <laughs> I'd go watch that show. <laughs> it's like, it, <laughs> and I'd, I'd I'd go not to watch the horrible bloodbath, but just to watch the parents and the kids who had brought them to see it. I'd watch the orca just be happy, just be like nom nom <laughs> nom, nom, delicious. nom nom. As much as you know, pigs are cute. Uh, anyway, so he's he's on his mic. He's going down there. There's a demon yeti. Mm-hmm. He makes his delivery. Mm-hmm. And just as in the beginning of this movie, the immediate people around him become the PCs. Jack isn't um, Jack isn't a PC. He's controlled by the DM. Mm-hmm. He's the fall guy, and he moves the story forward. Okay. So you have loaders and unloaders. You have a marine biologist. You have uh, trainers. Mm-hmm. You have all those kinds of people that you can pick from. A lot of the everyman categories. So Jack does this, and the uh, demonic furry soul of Lopan bursts forth, and then you get to have combat in SeaWorld. Let's describe SeaWorld for a second. You have (laughs) tanks of sharks. Mm -hmm. You have underwater tunnels that you can walk through. You have penguins. You have have penguins. You have Jack with a submachine gun around all this glass. I I just, I think, here's, here's the thing. When you're trying to run a movie like this, it's only as comedic as your group. Oh, yeah. So if your group is serious and, and not so funny, you have to set up for funny mm-hmm. situations. I, I agree with that. Now, a bunch of predators in tanks of glass around an error-prone hero, which is controlled by the DM, who can make oh. them do things, would actually begin to set the stage for your group to have a comedic event and not a simple sound number crunching. Funny. That sounds horrific. <laughs> Have you ever have you ever seen the movie Deep Blue Sea? No, it's a it's a genetically altered sharks, great whites, and well, it's I've got... seen Sharknado. Does that count? No, God, no, 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 no. It, this is got two, L, three, L, L, four. Cool J and like Samuel L. Jackson is in it. No. Okay, it's, it's terrible. Sound, it's great. Uh, forget what he says. It's, it's great. great. But that sounds similar, and it's, that's awesome. I would play that module with you. This, but that's a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is until you get to the, the, the penguin enclosure. Then it's just, <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of chance for comedy for, oh, my God, you just did what? Yeah. I can um, see every that. time Sends the PCs it. start getting their shit together, Jack Burton's going to do something. Um, not He's going to Leroy Jenkins, but, like everybody. Yeah, but you have a soul that can move, mm-hmm. and then you have... 
uh, an entire park filled with apex predators. To be fair, oh Jack God. Burton wasn't completely incompetent. Yeah, one time he had a knife in his boot and the guy fell on him, and that worked. <laughs> I know, but he also killed Lopan at the wait, end wait, of the movie. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he knows well, how to drive. Ta- when taken so. off guard, he uh-huh. does very well. He knows how to drive, so he is kind of competent. He drives a semi truck, so. Um, Lopan can jump from body to body. He is he effectively immortal. He has to be banished. Mm-hmm. So right now, the spirit of Lopan is in this creature, but it could just as easily be in a great white shark, a giant octopus. It could be in a lot of things. It could be in a penguin. There are lots of things that can happen. And I think that would be just a fun follow-up, just to kind of get the feel of it. That'd be great. I thought briefly about putting it in Disney World. Or is it Disneyland? I forget which one's down there. There's, there's, well, the ones in California is Disneyland. Yeah, but uh, I just don't care enough. I, I I prefer to have ravening hordes of penguins. I'm sure there's probably away already, already the like, you know, like hidden tunnels and dungeons in, in Disneyland anyway. So, yeah. like, oh. murky. Oh, there are. Like, murky <laughs> and, like, you know, filled with, you know, possessed animatronics and... You know the 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 former employees that didn't want to work anymore. They're down there in shackles. And once you get to dwarves. the point where Lopan is effectively immortal, mm-hmm. you have a constant foil that you can put big trouble in X, big trouble in Y. You can you can move this to any part of the country. Oh, okay. Yeah, you could have big trouble at Cape Canaveral. You could have big trouble at the Smithsonian. You could have you could a have lot big of... trouble in the thing and merge big trouble in Little China and the thing together. And Lopan was the evil creature that went into you know the yes. other Jack Burton character. There's there's you a lot of different mer- things you can do with escape this. from. You can have escape from big trouble in <laughs> in the thing. <laughs> in the thing. <laughs> I mean, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god! I, I want to run a game of nothing but all of the characters are different <laughs> characters that that Kurt Russell has played in movies. Even the carpenter what did from I Overboard. Just see him in. Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy two. That yeah. was him, right? Yeah, he played Ego. He played God. Yeah. Well, uh, sort of. Yeah, little God. But yeah, little G, uh, Everything yeah. that Kurt Russell. You hate said. supers, but you've seen it. I don't. That was, that's a weird one. That's like a D and D movie. Today. Okay. So we need to put it on the list then. Uh, I don't know. Let so, me get us. So Kurt Ru- Snake Plissken, Jack Burton, <laughs> the the guy from the thing. The thing. Come on. Something uh, else, Kurt Russell. Well, he's been in Overboard with Goldie Hawn uh, that they're doing a remake of, uh, where he was a carpenter and took advantage of her because she had amnesia. Uh, he was also in another oh, movie. bringing it down. Yeah, uh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> uh, he was also in a movie where his uh, wife was kidnapped out of his Jeep. Of his Jeep. Uh, there's, there's so many movies. Death Proof. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of his action Escape from L.A. Snake Plus. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway... A, a game of nothing but Kurt Russell clones. <laughs> That'd be all right. It's, it's... Kurt Russell clones, but so somewhere in a vat in Los, <laughs> uh, underneath underneath the desert, the Nevada desert, is a cloning facility full of Kurt Russells, and they <laughs> something the, the world something happens. They all wake up, and each one of them has the memories and the personality of, the character. of one of those characters implanted in them. Eh? Okay, so I'd play that too. Yeah. All right, so so we've got his character from Tango and Cash. Okay, yeah. All right, we've got his character from The Hateful Eight. Uh, we've got his bureaucratic guy from the the Fast and Furious movies. Okay. Um, uh, let's see what else. We got a party, guys. We've got, yeah. we've got Death Proof, Grindhouse. We, yeah, we got a party. Oh, his, so uh, Poseidon. Should should we do Poseidon? A, uh, yeah. a meta? We have oh his. God. We have his. We have his super from Sky High, which we've thought yeah. about. We've talked about doing yeah, yeah, yeah. that that on here. Okay, so we we right now have oh, the ultimate Kurt oh, Russell role oh, play. Oh, game. No, 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 no. And one other, one other, one of my favorite, one of my favorite Kurt Russell characters. Playing the Elvis impersonator from Three Thousand Miles to Graceland. Huh? Carl Kiesler, if you're listening to this, <laughs> I need you to assemble this as a Savage Worlds king. Oh, and, and Colonel Jack O'Neill in, in Stargate. Yeah, I think all of the characters, NPCs, all and the villains Kurt Russell are all Kurt the Russell. Time. <laughs> That sounds wonderful. Is there any way we can send just that bit to Kurt Russell? So that actually reminds me. I think we probably could, like through Twitter. Or I something. did have. I was trying to come up with another D and D adventuring party of nothing but but famous people with the last name of Simmons. Okay. Okay. Gene Simmons, 
Russell Richard, Simmons. Richard Simmons and J.K. Simmons were the only ones I could think of that were interesting. Who's uh, Russell Simmons? What do you what do you uh, he's count a producer, as like Def, Def Jam Records? Boy, what do you count as a sim- what do you count as a movie? No, 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 I'm just thinking famous people. I didn't say movie. So do they have famous to be real? People. No, no. It can be a character. Yeah, sure. Well, Simmons from Red versus Blue. Okay, yeah. yeah. Simmons from Red vs. Blue. The power Gene nerd in power Simmons, armor. Gene Simmons as his kiss character. Uh, Richard Simmons as Richard Simmons. J.K. Simmons being J.K. Simmons. Having uh, those characters <laughs> in a D&D party. <laughs> yeah. All right. I need a fifth. I need a fifth power Simmons. <laughs> Dusty, you're on your computer. Give us a power uh, Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> so who did you say? So who did you say? Gene Simmons. Uh-huh. Richard Simmons. Uh-huh. J.K. Simmons. Uh-huh. And Simmons. <laughs> Just Simmons. Um, Red versus Blue. So uh, you've got Russell Simmons, who was an entrepreneur. Uh, Run Simmons, who was uh, of Run DMC. Richard Simmons. No, 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 you're done. Run Simmons. Yeah, you're yeah, pretty much Run done. Simmons Is he also Run DMC? named Richard? Uh, no, it's Joseph. Okay, Joseph Run Simmons. All right, cool. Boom. He's there a we bard. Go. Yeah. We got, we got the group. Well, he's also, now he's a priest. Well, there we go. No shit. Yeah, are you, yeah, are you yeah. Fucking Joseph with me? Reverend Run Simmons. He's now an actual priest. He's the multi-class yeah. bard <laughs> priest. He's, he's, he's the he's the bard that had way too many drinks. His party died, and he turned into a priest to atone for his sins. So there we go. All right, now we have the Kurt Russell team, and we have the Simmons team. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Simmons. <laughs> all right. Anyway, talking about gaming, I, I, I for picking pick up and play, I would run this a Savage World. I could mentally set out each and every character in the movie. But I don't want to talk about Savage Worlds because we're going to take it, we're going to bring it back to day one. Matthew, would you like to do the honors? Feng Shui 2! It nice. is the big I trouble out, little China playing game. I liked it so much uh, from our, our first published episode that um, I went out and bought a hard copy of it myself just mm-hmm. because I wanted to have it around. And... This I the one you showed me was nice, but I I love having a paper book in my hand. Oh, yeah. absolutely! And this this was not cheap, but it was it was awesome to get. So let's give the characters some classes, some of the archetypes here. I mean, I think Jack Burton's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have an archer. We have a bandit. We have a big bruiser. We have a bodyguard. We have a bounty hunter. Uh, we're just going to skip past Cyborg. <laughs> uh, drifter. Driver. Driver? Yeah. Everyday yeah, hero. Everyday hero. hero. Yeah. Complete with a six pack and a... <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. A six pack pipe and a, and a tight t-shirt. Uh, the ex, Rambo sp- ex- ex- Special ex- Forces. The Exorcist Monk. Okay, that would be Egg Shen. Egg Shen. Or no, I think he'd be the Wise of Master. Yeah, okay, we we guy. actually get to that. Yeah. Uh, gambler, Gene Freak, Ghost, which well, Highway Ronin, almost. I you might go that way too. Karate Cop, <laughs> the killer. The Karate Cop would be uh, what's his name? Not not Wei Shen. Um, Pete Peter. Pete? No, uh, the other guy, the guy who I, I know. I'm just yeah, like, I just yeah. like he was a cop, wasn't he? Bit. I don't remember his name. I think he was a cop. Hold on, I got it. All right, it's, I'm, uh, Eddie Lee. Yeah, Eddie. Eddie. Yeah, uh, martial artist. That would be a ton of them. Uh, Mass Avenger doesn't come in. Maverick. Uh, he might be Maverick cop. Uh, ninja. There's Ninja. Old, Old master. master. That's Ed that's Shen. It. Yeah. That's okay. Ed Shen. Private investigator, maybe that's what she was. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah, well, uh, say so the journalist. Yeah, I, I could go yeah. with. I would go with investigator. Scrappy kid. I don't really have a Sif- scrappy kid. Sifu, 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 Sifu. God, it even looks just like him from Drunken Master. Oh yeah, it does completely. Uh, sorcerer. Okay, we so Lopan villain. or S- yeah. Okay, well both of them really. Yeah, supernatural, supernatural creature. creature. <laughs> Sword master. Mm-hmm. Thief. Thief. Yep. Transformed crab. Yeah, those are further weird right. transform. Two fisted archaeologist, but oh. kicking of is yes. the title of the next chapter. This is the one that I would go for for this. absolutely um, in a heartbeat. Like, yeah, if I were going to sit down and game. plan out a game with this, I would definitely use Funky yeah. Two. Um, it it has that mechanic that makes combat much faster too, which helps. In fact, what I would love to do is do a, fun, a Big Trouble in Little China themed game, and at the end, Lo Pan is defeated. Mm-hmm. But we then find out 500 years later 
that Lopan was simply the emissary of the great darkness in space that's coming. <laughs> that's and great. then we play through a sequel where they have to save and take the take it world. all the way through to... Take uh, it all the way through to, f- to that fifth fifth follow-up element. game. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nice. That could be wonderful. Like, yeah. Yeah, I could see mm. that. You know, after just seeing Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I'd like to just give Kurt Russell a bit of props for, like, not getting weird and old and fat like the rest of the 80s heroes. Mm-hmm. He, he, he held it together very well. Yeah. Who didn't? Val Kilmer. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Um, also, Sylvester Stallone, who was also in that movie, kept it together pretty well. Yeah, but he's been dosing with HGH for many years. Whatever. Year. I don't care. He's <laughs> not a professional athlete. It's that's not like true. he plays on a team. He's actually banned from Australia. It's like, not like it's a the, real place. <laughs> <laughs> he's banned from the island? Yeah, he's Australia? banned from Australia what because he dog? was smuggling out HGH oh. for his wow. movies. Yeah. They said well, you can't go what's back. What's HGH? Human growth hormone. It's that little thing that makes your muscle in your in your body chemistry makes your muscles go, I'm going to get bigger. Huh. So you inject yourself with it and it, it's steroids. But it's the Yeah, I mean, he's, he's an actor. If he was running a race or in a fight, then it would mm-hmm. matter. But, I mean, the guy's an actor. I don't care what he does to make himself big. And it's it's funny you bring up uh, Feng Shui um, because every one of, like, the gaming boards that talk about turning this movie into it, yeah. talk about, use that one. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even have to think about it. Yeah. No. The and- moment Dusty's like, Big Trouble Little China, it's like, well, that's fucking obvious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is an excellent game. Um, and this is an excellent movie. And like I said, I, I tossed off a quick little module, but I really just, in this one instance, I just want to play the movie. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I just want to play the movie. Like, I, completely. I write a module, and it happens at the end of the movie. I do that every time. I write a hook. But I don't want to do that this time. I just want to play the movie. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's difficult playing something that you already know, you know? I've I've done um, it before though. It, I think it's we really all difficult. Have. I've even as a GM, it's difficult for me to run a module twice for different groups. It's uh, God, it, it's hard to explain why it's so difficult. But there's first off, there's the sense of deja vu. Like, have I have I said this already? Have I said mm-hmm. this before? Mm-hmm. Did I already explain the room to them once? Did, I have did, never had yeah. two different gaming parties because I've I've run modules before and I've run yeah. the same. I have never had it so close together because people are just fucking weird Mm -hmm. um and everyone i we like to think that humans are stamped out in a factory but reality is different to every every pair of eyes that see it it's never going to be the same and i i personally wouldn't mind that yeah and especially when you're comparing it to a movie sorry it's it's going to deviate so far that it's it's not going to be a problem well yeah i know because like what if Okay, so the movie opens, and what if they prevent the girl from getting kidnapped in the airport? Okay. They steal well, the truck. Yeah. You right, bounce so on the, the fly. Yeah. Now we got to do that. So, okay, well, what if instead they're in the, they take the truck down the alleyway, and that fight happens, and then they intervene, and then the fight goes differently? Mm-hmm. Or what if somehow. The three guys still show up and kill everyone but them. Yeah, I, I, what I if think somehow I they roll so high on one and get like such a quit that they kill Thunder right there. Oh, well, that's when you have your DM screen. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, the DM. Let it ride. No, Go with it. No, I, I, no. I, I think the DM, the, that's where the DM kicks in and plays. That, that's God. a stylistic difference yeah. between so, you and I. You, you, I. I am all dice. I do the dice, lay where yeah. they fall. Yep, I know so, you do. I don't believe in an unkillable monster. I think that if you're going to put something, if you're going to give stats to an enemy and that enemy is going to have hit points or that enemy is going to have a way to defeat it or whatnot, then you need to fess up. You need to cop to that. That is a contract that you have written. Mm, Just as if you're going to force the players to be holding to the hit points on their character sheets, then you should be following the same rule. Oh, but I don't. So Mm. if the... If in that fight, if Jack and Wei Shen manage to come up with a cool idea, and they're like, all right, cool, and they defeat Thunder right then, and he blows, let's say he blows up. They blow Thunder up right there. But they can't. Why yeah, not? he's a demon. He, just, he finds another what body. He's not what tied if, to this you, world you until seem, his master is dead. sold on just preventing them from doing that. What if they come up with some ass pull of a way that you didn't think of, and suddenly you're like, that's a good idea. But they can't, because they're tied through low pan. 
And Lopan has already been hit by the truck. There's absolutely nothing they can do to him what until he's What if Thunder's mortal. just a shell of a body? He's just now that, different. Again, like your thing, that spirit's there. Lopan puts that spirit in someone else. Thunder may come back. But yeah. allow yeah. If, if somebody comes up with something cool, allow them to do it. Oh, they can do it, but but no matter cool. what, like like I've run games where that was fucking great. And by the dice roll behind my screen, yeah, you just killed my big baddie for yeah. that quickly into the game. That it, I'm going to keep that at, going at the same time. Yeah, I'm not um, going to let that baddie if, die. If this was gambling, I would completely agree with your take on the value of the dice. But this is storytelling from the way I see it. I agree, and I'm down with the story. But it's also a game, and a game has rules. Agreed. If mm-hmm. You are not willing to accept the result of the die, then you need to come up with a reason but to in, not roll the die. In, in the these first place. books, they they even say you know these are more guidelines. Like like White Wolf even says in there, yeah, these are the rules, but they're more guidelines. Play play, run it how you want. Any game that opens up saying that you are you should break these rules is a badly written game. Most games I, on the shelf are badly first, written. If the games. first rule of your game is to break the rules, mm-hmm. then you should have written your rules better. You should have written rules that don't need to be breaking. That is, unfortunately, one of the appeals of writing a generic, open-ended, broad appeal kind of thing. If you're going to write something smaller, focus, like some of the games that we've reviewed on some of the other episodes, right. you don't need the rule zero because there's nothing to question. Right. With something like D and D, I can see it. I still, I think it's a shitty rule. Like, I don't think that you should roll the dice if you're not willing to accept the results of those dice. I, I you just need feel to come up that... with a way to not roll the dice instead. I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I just, uh, I, I feel that the characters don't need to know everything that's happening in order for them to have oh, an oh, excellent story. Oh, definitely not. But we're talking about us running Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Which means we all already know things. I mean, so at that for, point, for, for example, kinda... let, let's say that uh, Jack uh, and um, the actual hero enter that street fight, right? Wait, mm-hmm. wait, 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 Lee. Wang, Wang, Wang. Wang. I'm, <laughs> I've been play. I keep saying Wei. I've been playing Sleeping Dogs. Ah, yeah, and Wei Shin is the lead character of Sleeping Dogs, and yeah. I, I was playing it right before you arrived. But <laughs> l- let's say they do enter that fight, right? Mm-hmm. That fight is going to go off as written no matter what. That's not an actual fight. That is an introduction. That is your killing rats. You're going to get through it. Don't roll the dice if you plan the encounter. No, no, if no, you've wait, already wait. planned how it's going to end. Um, well, to some degree you won't be because of the, <laughs> because of the game. But at the, uh, let's say at the end where they do take him out with a Buddha, that's an inspired move. Mm-hmm. And that's a hero DM, move, yeah. The DM lets that stand because it's smart. And it's good, and it worked. And it ends the story at the same yeah. time. It's, it's I don't, good for the story. I don't think we are ever going to agree on No, this. No, that's not okay. on this one. I, no, that's I, fine. It's, it's two and different schools. I, I think we yeah. both have yeah. camps, too, on this. And mm-hmm. I, I think that the conversation about it is almost as important. Yeah. Uh, because I, I see the value of what you're saying. I really do. I just... I, I'm, I'm very busy in my personal life, and I don't have time to memorize... All the different modifiers and behaviors oh, of say D and D. Yeah. So I just I go. Don't either. Well, nope. Uh, and the monster scurries down a hole. Or nice job. That thing is fucking dead. <laughs> yeah. well, I, no, I, that's that's a better way of doing it. Yeah. Just say nice job. That thing is dead. Now, if I do that, and I make them feel that it's right, because behind a screen they hear. Yeah, I'm not in. That's not, just a prop. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there are many times I, I, I to kind of divert into Star Wars and West End games. I ran a game with, uh, with several people, Mike included, Navita included for a while. And there was a lot, there was, there, I had my big baddie, which was basically just one of the old, um, red guards, uh, old Sith guards that, uh, he, I, no one was going to kill him, even though there were many times where they did damage that would knock him down. But I needed him to continue the story. Like, he had to be there. So it was always, yeah, I rolled the dice, and, oh, okay, yeah. It, Mike's Mike had, like, a lightsaber, and he fucking cut through That's him. what we call a railroad. And that's fine. Yep. And I need that I in some of those stories. it's ethical that you're not using that thing to beat up on the characters. And this is important. It has to be an ethical use. You can't just say... Well, you've been killing the dragon with giant boulders from afar while it was pinned to the ground for four days, but it's a dragon and you're doing no damage. No, that's bullshit, and you're shit as a DM. 
this this should never be used. What? As a, <laughs> I, I, what I'm saying is, is I don't that even this, know where that came from. I, I followed I'm it. That was that great. There's no unkillable monsters, but I'm saying if it's necessary for the story, then fudge a little bit. Yeah, like Vader was necessary all three movies up until the very end when he was weakened. He was necessary to have that. That's not a role playing game. I, That's I'm, a movie. I, I know, and, but I'm, I'm equating it to a movie. And and, and it, it, if, if you, you were playing down that, by roles, if you're playing many times, attempts were made and failed, and those were actual dice rolling. The GM wasn't cheating. Vader was just super powerful. Now you can have a really powerful monster, and that monster can totally kick the asses of the heroes. But doesn't it make for a better story when he dies saving his son? Oh well, yeah, eventually. <laughs> but I mean, th- there was there was Those enough stories, combined lasers what, coming what, at him to make up what for I'm that lightning. What I'm saying is that saying. you have to be willing to let those stories happen organically as a result of play, instead of aim for it. Now that's an interesting point that you're saying right now. Those, Elaborate. Those come out best when it happens, and you're not expecting it as the GM. Like. You can't sit that, down. That is valid. That is a valid point. Like you don't sit down to run Star Wars expecting a, expecting a redemption arc from Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah. you run. You no, sit down. No, to you're run right. Star it's Wars, best for everyone when everyone's surprised. You, and that, you that's, let it yeah. come out. So if you're aiming at it, if your whole thing is, I can't let Vader die right a now. A fucking Star Wars just went scene off scene behind my eyes, and the more yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I I I get what you're saying now. No, that's that's good. Because what I'm saying is Because I've been on both sides of that. Yeah. Sometimes it's better. It's in fact, it's almost always better if the players defeat your your bad dude, let them defeat it and see where the story goes from there. You're going to be surprised and it's probably going to be a pleasant surprise. That's That's very interesting, Nathaniel. I'll have to give that some more thought. That's good stuff, man. I like that because as as a GM, it's true. I do have more fun when I'm surprised. I agree, but I'm not. I'm if, if it happens in the first five minutes, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to. Also, happen. a valid point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want to sit and do, and uh, like have a, an arc ready for the next fifteen sessions, and then my big baddie some of that is protecting your own prep. (laughs) Yeah. And some big baddie that I have come in just to like set the, the overall feel for what's going to happen. If if somebody fucking kills that, that character in five, no, I'm good. No, 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 no. If we're literally talking the first five minutes of a game that, you or can definitely even first call session. that a mulligan. Okay, even like, first session. It's that's not when you happen. stop and say, hey guys, this thing you did. He was really necessary. He was really necessary. <laughs> and so I've been working on this for three it? weeks. <laughs> now, I would, here's I, my question to you give player. experience. What? Well, even if you mulliganed it, if, if someone pulls it out of their ass and does well enough and is clever enough, do you give experience? That all depends on the system and how experience is done. Right. Like, I mean, if you're if you're counting individual experience points, have the conversation with the players. Be like, yeah. look, this thing you did, it was really cool. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I kind of need that guy alive. So I, I, back in high school, I was introduced to Star Wars West End games, uh, and I will pimp that out to the day I die. Uh, oh, you have been. It's yeah, right. I know. And I was asked at the last minute. For my my then best friend uh, to play in a session with one of his other really close friends, uh, it was Joey and Mike, and Brandon and a number of other people that we all went to high school with. That they were really big into playing Star Wars, and I didn't know that that, that I wasn't given a lot of prep time. It was just show up and and you're going to play a character, and I didn't know that the we were playing at the time the bridge the the barge scene from Jedi. Okay. So the bard scene where Luke is on Luke and Han and and you know Han is blind and everything. Oh yeah. Okay. okay so we're, we're, that's the, that's where we're at. So I'm playing just another bounty hunter, and I see this character who ends up being Han, doing what Han does. You wasted him. Didn't yes, you? I did. Nice job. In like ten <laughs> minutes of gameplay, and I was told, "Yeah, you're never coming back because you killed Han." Well, you see that that's the thing where I said this is this, it's open to abuse. That's a group problem. Yeah, that, that, that's problem. just a bad group. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've also had a DM abuse me. Um, We're getting I, the I, therapy of gameplay. D D <laughs> whatever. It's good stuff. Um, I need to come up with a. I was thing I was I there. was playing a dragon. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Excuse me, a bard. And I was. Uh, that's a hell of a difference between I, a dragon and a bard. Shut the hell up, and I'll tell you about it. <laughs> um, I was changed into a dragon, but a bit at a time. 
Oh wow! That so sounds pretty awesome. my <laughs> head would change. Oh, fun! <laughs> <laughs> I would get a tail. Uh-huh. I mean, I I have been. Once you figured out how to how to lug that big old head around, Jesus! No, no, no! The okay. head would go away. Okay, okay so my... was it like your standard body, and then a I think huge bobble head? head. <laughs> okay, that's that's where I was going. Or would it just still still stay like your normal sized head, but it was like looked like a dragon? Think bobble head. I'm I'm going that route now. <laughs> okay, okay, so how'd that turn out? Oh, horrible! I I didn't enjoy it, and I, the DM has a lot of power, and I I think I think for a bit you are okay to fudge a little bit as long as it's in the interest of your players and the story. I get the sentiment behind that. Uh-huh. Personally, talking to you, Danny, I'm I... still sting over that shit. <laughs> I'm not going to roll a die if I'm not going to accept the results. That's fair. If I'm going to fudge it, I'm what, just what if someone fudge forces a combat f- on you? What? what if what if you're uh, what if it's a story time and your players choose to take it to action time? Which most players do. That's, it happens sometimes. There's what ways a... to resolve that in the system. But, okay. Uh, I mean, first off, if they are powerful enough to defeat your big bad one on one, there's always a situation. Mm-hmm. So. You as the game master have the ability to control the environment in which all of these things are happening. If you have created a situation where your big bad is right there just hanging out and the players force a combat on the big bad and they're in a position to win, you done goofed. Yeah, like, some of that is on you. Why that should situation should not have been should not have happened in the first place. If you weren't willing to accept the consequences of of unpredictable players doing unpredictable things. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you know, if you, if you don't want Vader killed by the combined might of the party in the first five minutes and Vader better not be there alone, he needs to have 20 of his guards with him, and he needs to have, you, you have control over the situation, which means you have so much control. You should never have to fudge the die. You should never have to roll the die and then make up a result. You can just make up the result right. without rolling mm-hmm. without that illusion of predestined or of choice. You can just say yes or say no. <laughs> you can just say what happens. Yeah. And then you just say, okay, yeah, he shoots and the person to your left dies. And you're like, well, did he roll for that? And you're like, I'm not going to roll for that. Yeah. It's, it's dramatic. A it's, you just did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'm going to shoot someone. You need to roll for it because you have the character sheet. And this is just storytelling dressing. Yeah. That guy had no name. He's dead. Or whatever. Anyway, right. he was the guy that got grabbed by the by the monster yeah. in the dungeon. And I didn't think off. we were going to get so philosophical on it, but I, I like where we're going. Yeah, should we wrap this? Yeah. I, All right, guys. Thanks it. for tuning in. <laughs> we had. Uh, Sorry, I'm getting fun- ran- no, 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 ranting. It's, it's good there. stuff. Uh, we had uh, Feng Shui Two for Big Trouble in Little China. Mm-hmm. Both fantastic. If this is were... this is the second time we've used this gaming system. Yes. Uh, we used it with uh, Fifth Element. Yeah, Fifth Element, Episode one. which we keep yeah. tying to, which yeah. I like. Yes. Yeah. And we also have Kurt World. Uh, what was the other one? Simmons? Yeah. <laughs> Kurt yeah. World of the Simmons Experience. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's great. That is. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. My yeah, name is Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And we'll see you next week. Yep, definitely. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Have Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week. <laughs>